Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you some techniques for making your ship more durable and how to and some techniques on how to make your ship last longer in combat. <laughs> All right, let's give an example here. Uh, let's say I were to pop this down. Uh, this is a little assault frigate design. It's not exactly little, but uh, like this is one of my best combat ships. Uh, and what you'll notice is that it's very thin. This is to decrease the profile. What's this like ring around it for? That's on a lot of my other ships. These are uh, decoy arms. They've changed in the new update, but still the decoys might get a little bit more fire away from your hull. So let's say that I'm using this ship in a combat situation. Uh, so let's say I just accelerate. Now look. What I, what I, what's different about this ship than a lot of other ships that you might see is that since every uh, ship is like maxed out at 100 meters per second, you can't really outrun someone or like dodge someone's missile by outrunning it. Instead, you gotta get a lot of gyroscopes so you can turn really fast. And that's like, I like. If you go to uh, the Atlantic Raptor 2, I think it is, uh, he actually has a video, he has a stream VOD, where it's him versus me, in this, and I'm in this thing, he's got like one of the most powerful fighters I've ever seen, to the point where these fighters could take out like, a could take out most ships this size and he died to this ship while it was crippled my ship was crippled and it still managed to kill like 10 of his fighters so I'd say it's pretty good but how exactly does this happen well first off you got to do something that I almost never do I just go over this is a common mistake just Go, what I don't want to do is just go overboard with heavy armor. What I did was I built this entire front section, and then when it starts to slope down, I switch to light armor here. So, like, at this point uh, and further, it's all light armor except for like, a couple spots in key areas. Another thing you want to notice is that I've got staggered turrets, so I can have a lot of them firing the same target at once while I'm still being protected. Uh, and I've got reasonably good turret spacing, so I'm not going to all be killed in one run. So all this combined means that no turrets are going to be sniped off. Uh, it also means that you're going to really... You, you, you could really just go in circles around someone and obliterate them uh, one final tip uh, it, rocket launchers how they work you might think oh no they're gonna blow themselves up they're covered in glass no anything that's like a panel like this like even a, like a transparent LCD armor panel window graded catwalk all of all of that stuff the rocket actually spawns a little bit farther than that actual launcher so like i think like halfway through the block it'll spawn so actually this is just extra protection and since glass is somehow the most powerful armor in space engineers i covered the missile launchers with it uh and that's how they're protected the one weak spot I would say, and this is what we're going to cover as well, how to make it more durable, like physically durable, not just like dodging stuff. Let's say I have a fighter here. Let's see. Let's just get a broadsword. And I might do a video on this depending on how... Uh, 
you guys depending on how you guys want to depending on whether or not you guys want to see it so let's just uh like, sorry so this is a pretty hard spot to hit it's like the exhaust port and the death star but let's say that somehow you've penetrated the ship's armor here with like a railgun shot or something um so like this is a same example but like in the new update the new update they've added physics where if a hydrogen tank gets damaged man, did that do it so you can already see there's a huge amount of damage inside sure i've just fired a bunch of rockets in but what really happened was i hit a hydrogen tank and all of a sudden the entire ship is gutted right the entire ship is now gutted all the fuel tanks are damaged so if i were to take a rocket launcher in here hang on let me just grab a rocket launcher if i were to just grab a rocket launcher and do enough damage here actually no I'm, for the for the for time's sake i'm just gonna use the fighter So yeah, when uh, Raptor, or Church as I call him, uh, did this, he hit the fuel line and managed to blow up all the tanks and the entire ship split in half. And this is only like maybe six or seven hydrogen tanks and there's already like a gaping hole in the ship. Like this is huge. And I'm going to show you the best ways to make your ship more durable. Okay, so I've set up a basic demonstration of how gyroscope, like an example of how gyroscopes completely, like there, so pe a lot of people that you might talk to say, oh, having refineries is like having super thick armor. But refineries are pretty expensive. These are slightly cheaper, I think. Uh, at least on their own. Gyroscopes are still pretty expensive. But these are better than heavy armor. But since you can't really angle them like this. And they only have one point of connection. And that's the bottom. Uh, it's hard to use. So use it like composite on tanks. You have, it's like this thick unbendable substance that is very dense and can add up can add a whole lot more armor thickness to a vehicle so use it like that uh just have like panels of it in good in like real in spots you need to protect so let's say i were to shoot here this is an example let's say i were to shoot here uh i fire off that from moving uh so yeah what you can see here it just penetrates right through and if there's a hydrogen tank right behind it it's as good as gone all right so yeah the railgun penetrates all the way through whatever's behind it good as gone now uh you put this thing up against gyroscopes. Check this out. Point blank range. It hits. And it hits one gyroscope. And it is still not it's non-functional, but it's still there. Gyroscopes can stop rail guns. So, if you have layered gyroscopes on heavy armor, like that, it, you're gonna need like so many railguns to even penetrate that. Like, gyroscope covered armor is the meta. This thing stops, or these are, these stop railguns, 
the new artillery cannons, the assault cannons, rockets do a bit more, which is why weapon diversity is a good thing, which is what I'll talk to, which is, which is what I'll talk about later. Like, this is crazy. Uh, so, like, let's test this on, like, an actual ship. Uh, so let's teleport back to the ship that I was going to demonstrate with. Uh, so this is basically a knockoff of the Battlestar Galactica. I'm not sure if you've heard of it or not. But basically, uh, it's all heavy armor. So that's one thing. So it's built to be just like something that absorbs all the hits. And I never quite finished the interior, so it's a bit bland. Oh, please forgive me. It's got no uh, gyroscope armor here because it's got a lot of armor. Well, actually, it's mostly hollow, but let's say I, I were to put gyroscopes here. Uh, just like a little bit of extra protection. Uh, so yeah, this entire section here is covered in gyroscopes. So like, no matter what, if you hit a hydrogen tank, whatever, this person flying will stay alive. You cannot possibly get to it unless you are either cheating or using some kind of clang method to get an even bigger hole in the side of the ship. Either way, uh, let's do the demonstration. So let's say that this is an attacking ship and somehow the turrets were neutralized. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick little example. Uh, of how the gyroscopes work when we get to a good angle. So let's say I'm just gonna shoot right here. Center mass, pretty promising target. Now what actually happened? Absolutely nothing. It penetrates the armor, hits the gyroscope, done and done. This is the most powerful weapon in space engineers right now. The highest arm penetration completely neutralized because of one block. I mean, sure, you could just shoot the engines, but like, th in the end, this thing has so much auxiliary, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but. Yeah, you, to you could totally disable it. But to be honest, like, if the guy inside is still alive, he could totally just jump back to base, get a repair, and then be back in the fight a couple days later. Because all the stuff, all the life support is intact, so this thing can actually, in a survival situation, this thing could totally take a bunch of hits, railgun or otherwise, as you can see right here. And since the pilot is still alive... He could probably just jump using any remaining jump drives and just limp back home. Like he could totally just get back to base on off of limping in this thing. Because he's still alive in there and he could probably salvage the debris and get stuff. So or just have a supporting ship just pick him up and he can give the GPS of where he is. Like let's say I was to fire here. That's another issue with the railgun. If you don't hit the exact target that you're aiming for, uh, nothing's gonna blow up. Like, I missed the hydrogen tank here by a couple, like, by one block. If I hit the hydrogen tank, the entire ship goes kablooey, but it didn't. Because I missed it by one block, which is why a lot of people are saying the new weapons are bad. They're all armor penetrating weapons. Uh, so if you miss a critical system like these hydrogen tanks by even a block, they're not going to blow up. They're not, nothing's going to happen. Like, cause the, the only, uh, area damage weapon is rockets. Uh, so if I were to use rockets here, I could probably destroy these hydrogen tanks cause they're only covered by like thin plating here. But since that isn't the case... 
if I was using a railgun, like, I now I can hit it again. But, like, a lot of people are saying that, like, on a, this, if this is a moving target, then it would be really hard to hit that. But, and they're right. Yeah, look at that. One hit with the railgun into the engine bay. The tank completely blows up. Something's clanging around. And there's pretty big damage but as you can see no damage is outside that little nacelle now why is that well this is something i like to do oh my god what is clanging around there we go so let's say uh i have this big ship now what i did here is there is actually spaced armor that is like that counts like two layers of heavy armor so any explosion that happens isn't going to actually hit the main section so sure you might land a hit there again but this spaced armor that space double layered armor is just not going to let you do that it's not going to cripple me in any way like i unknowingly built this to be absolutely tanky for this new update <laughs> dude this little bit of spacing and covering my inside of gyroscopes sure it's really slow and the turrets are gonna get shut off but it's so big that it can always make it back to base from any fight unless it's fighting a really big ship uh, all these ships that I'm doing examples on will be put on the workshop if you want to look at them uh, and use them for your own study of what kind of ship you want to build or what. So yeah, another thing that I want to talk about is turret diversity. This ship was built before the combat update. And as you can see, the weapon diversity isn't that good. What it's good at doing, I mean these things if they land to hit they're very lackluster rocket launchers are very lackluster uh they're like it they're like point they're like if you hit you hit and you do a lot of damage but you're gonna miss a lot uh and if you're moving and if you're fighting a fast mover you're probably not gonna hit very many unless they're a bad pilot uh so these rockets they're like the only weapon and besides the gatling gun that doesn't do like penetrating damage uh so the other weapon on here is the gatling gun the gatling gun might actually be the new meta because it's the only weapon that can actually c consistently hit any target but it doesn't do too much damage but this one might be the meta because since they're doing a constant amount of damage instead of just m occasionally missing a couple shots it's constantly doing damage it might actually be the new meta uh Another thing that you want to do is have your turrets like not in a row like this, so, like one person can just one run gun run this entire section and ruin your turrets, which is a big problem for this thing. Uh, but with the new turrets, or the new weapons, I should say, so we've got all these new weapons. So we've got uh artillery turrets I mean, assault cannon turrets which are basically just like higher velocity armor penetrating versions of rocket launchers so they have a more consistent hit rate uh they do penetrating damage instead uh and they've got a they got twice the range so that's pretty good the big brother of that is the artillery turret uh basically that this has a two kilometer range uh and it's got more armor penetration but the thing about this and the assault turret you might think oh the artillery can is straight up better no it's not something about it i i haven't done too much testing of it but it just isn't quite enough like it, it's literally just the range that gives it the advantage that it has it's not anything else uh sure like on paper it might do more damage but like the assault cannon overall is just 
better with like fire rate because the reload is also pretty bad. Uh, and yeah, so for fixed weapons, we've got the rocket launcher, which is the same as the rocket turret, but you can aim it. Artillery cannon is just like the artillery turret, but you can aim it like the rocket launcher. Railgun, you've already seen. So yeah, but there's one other turret type that I haven't mentioned that is incredibly hard to get going on a survival situation. So let's say that I have hang on, my absolution class super carrier. Uh, a while back, I made this completely covered in these custom turrets because one one of the great things they added in the new update was you can make custom turrets using these custom turret controller blocks here so i have these quad cannons with uh assault cannons from the assault turrets i've got gatling turrets i've got these flak quad cannons that are pretty popular these auto cannons are only on small grid, and for my testing, they are the best anti fire defense I have ever seen. Just the combination, I mean, sure, they got a slow fire, but they make up for it by pretty good muzzle velocity, and they just destroy fighters. Because for a fighter, there isn't that much uh, area for them to penetrate, so if they hit, they're gonna almost always hit something critical. Because most fighters just have one layer of armor because they're trying to move fast and outmaneuver your turrets. These things land like a couple hits and your fighter is taking some serious damage. Uh, so let's say... Yeah, so I've got a couple regular turrets here, but the issue with these is that since projectors don't do subgrids, you have to set up every turret manually. So you gotta really work if you wanna set these up on, like in any number uh, so so that's the that's the other turret that I wanted to show uh, another thing you want to take into account yeah so you, so really what's gonna keep you alive is the spacing of fuel tanks what also what, what also blows up is cargo containers full of ammo so you really want to be aware of how much ammo you're bringing to the fight. Makes ship like it makes like ammo carrying ships a bit more useful. So like, if they get hit, they blow up. But if but they can supply like they they're not gonna get hit. But like you can have them like within a certain range of the fight. And then if your ship runs out of uh, ammo, you could fly back to it and then pick up more ammo and get back into it while your teammates uh, go for it. Uh, but if you if you have a big enough ship, then you, you shouldn't need to worry about it too much as long as you are careful with how much ammo you're bringing and what cargo containers you're storing it in. What I do is I, especially on servers that have like the container capacity like at 10 times, I'll put a bunch of, like, I'll put a small cargo container between like a large group of turrets. Uh, so that way it's a one by one by one block. That will explode very violently if hit, but it's a one by one by one block, so it's not going to be hit easily. And it feeds all my turrets, even if the conveyor line to the main car connection is severed, and it's hard to hit. But you can always have a main ammo storage at the heart of your ship, with like maybe like two or four large cargo containers for a ship this size, that can just carry all that. So if you're gonna have like independent ammo magazines, small cargo containers are the meta. So what I'd say the meta would be is just for like a medium range combat ship, I'd say get a couple assault cannons, maybe a railgun to start the combat off, but I wouldn't recommend using it in combat all the time because like let's say you because most ships have like enough ammo for maybe three to five minutes of combat 
uh, you fire it once to open it, and then you're in a constant maneuvering turn fight. The railgun automatically has a full one minute reload no matter how much power you're feeding into it. Uh, so you're fighting for five straight minutes, 60 second reload, plus whatever time it takes you to get them in lineup. You're really only going to get like three to four shots off per engagement. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend that. Really, it's just a lot of resources being wasted. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're building a long range ship, it might be a good idea. But the more conventional and cheaper option is just use the artillery cannons. Uh, it, it's just cheaper, more conventional, faster reload, all that stuff. Uh... There might be a part two on this, like how to maneuver your ship. Uh, at what point do you stop adding gyroscopes? Uh, best spots to protect. Uh, but there will be a part. There, there'll probably be a part two to this because this is actually a good series idea I had this morning because I was just completely bored. And I'll see you later.